Good afternoon all. Today I will be talking about the role of a spiking neuron and why it's computationally faster compared to artificial neuron. So as a deep learning practitioner, I would say when we're training any kind of neural network model, it takes a lot of time. That means there, there might be some computation is happening inside the hidden layers or in our model that it takes longer time. And for that, we need to understand what exactly we're trying to achieve. We are somehow trying to replicate the human brain, isn't it? We are trying to replicate its functionality and we're trying to understand how it's communicating, how it's doing some computationally challenged works in a fraction of seconds without even our prior knowledge, right? So we can pick any neural network model, more or less we are replicating the, the brain only whether it's identification, whether it's a classification, or it's a decision-making process. These are all inspired from human brain. So there is no doubt on these neural networks are built of human brain, right? So for that, if we are talking about to do the computation in a faster way and a very efficient manner, then we need to understand the role of single neuron. Because at the end of the day, when we're designing any neural network model, we are just trying to model these single neurons. So if you see here, the neurons in the hidden layer, it kind of provides the information, right? Like in the left-hand side, if you see the spiking activities, you can see that's how the neurons communicate. There are some input branches, those are called dendrites. There's a cell body over here that is called a soma. The axon then, kind of a transition branch, which kind of helps to get some outputs. That is a synapsis. Now, neurons communicate with each other through electrical spikes. You see there are some spikes. These are the electrical spikes. That's how they communicate. And spikes could be entering to different branches at a very different time. And SOMA processes them and determines if the accumulation is greater than any internal voltage, then they kind of do some kind of spike. Well, you can think as of now in a simpler way that the spikes are nothing but language of neuron. Now, we need to understand what is the difference of artificial neuron and a biological neuron, which is quite obvious, I would say. So if you see in figure A, this is one example of artificial neuron where we are providing some kind of inputs and we are adding or multiplying those input with weight that is w0 w1 w2 and then we are summing up all over and in the soma all the computation is happening we are adding some kind of bias then we are using the activation function so that so that our output will be in a certain range and based on that Due to this activation, we are adding some kind of non-linearity to our artificial neuron. Otherwise, if you'll think these are nothing but layer by layer multiplication and accumulation. So if you see in spiking neuron, that is also similar, but the difference would be there is there you see there is one, one, zero, one. These are nothing but the spike activities, right? So by contrast, the spiking neurons communicate through spike trains. It could be coded in a binary events like zero and one. Now the SOMA can continuously conduct some kind of nonlinear transformation to produce the output of this input as a spike train again. This behavior could be modeled by using any kind of uh, leaky integrated fire, integrated fire model. So for, for that, uh, I will explain what is a leaky integrated fire model. But before that, we need to understand when exactly the membranes or how exactly we're getting the action potential from, from the biological neuron. So if you see that uh, the difference between ANN and SNN could be the spike patterns each spike neuron kind of experiences a rich dynamic behaviors. More specifically, besides the information of back propagation or propagating in a spatial domain, the current state is tightly affected by the past history in a temporal domain. Therefore, SNNs usually have more temporal versality 
with lower power precision. Now, before that, let me explain this figure. So here we are providing some input spike. Let's say it kind of raised till 0 0.05, then 0 0.01, 0 0.1, sorry. And then it kind of suddenly goes down. Like it's a feature of a signal. When it's spiking, then again, it's kind of decreasing its potential and it, it kind of goes to a refractory period. At that point, if we are not providing higher threshold, that point, the membrane will not activate. Now, the reason of understanding this spiking a small membrane potential is we are trying to model spiking neurons, right? So for that, we need to understand how the spiking activity is happening. So there will be a spiking input. Let's consider a higher threshold, something we're providing. It kind of spiked the membrane, cell membrane, and then it will go down to the refractory period. At that way, it's going to transfer each information from one node to other. So here what we saw, it's not dependent on continuous input, which artificial neurons we try to provide. In artificial neural network, we are providing continuous input. But here, the input will be in a time domain. And it, it, it is nothing but a spike. It could be 0 and 1. You see, we are only multiplying 0 and 1. And let's compare, we are multiplying 0 0.987 with 1.587, something like that. So in that case, we can clearly see that the multiplication of 0 and 1 could be computationally less challenging. And maybe that's the reason spiking neurons are more faster. Since a spike only fires when the membrane potential is exceeding a threshold, let's consider one simple example. When we are doing a linear regression, because I think all the models are kind of inspired from that, uh, not precisely, but some, some regression problems, I would say. So in that case, we are trying to be closer to our predicted value, right? So we can think that when a value is getting closer to the predicted value, that could be one major action potential. And when it's reaching, the spiking neuron will activate faster. But when it's not near to the predicted value, it might not activate. And in that case, we are saving the power consumption and we're saving the computation. Now, let me explain. Since a spike only fires when the membrane potential or the signals exceeds a threshold, the entire spike signals are often sparse. And the, to compute this kind of activity, it's, it could be event-driven activity. So event-driven activity are more faster compared to giving continuous input, whether we don't know where we're getting the output or not. We're just providing input signals. So even driven activity kind of enables the spike inputs to arrive because the, spike, uh, the spikes are in binary, that is zero and one. The costly multiplication between the input and weight could be easier, right? So for this reason, we can say that a spiking neural network could be more efficient with less power consumption compared compared to our artificial neurons with intensive computation. Thank you.